I like to move around a lot because that's what I do. I'm Italian. I can't stand in one place for too long. So quick show of hands. First convention. First convention. Wow. How many current web center owners? How many got their web center this weekend? Wow, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Well, you are in the right room. We are going to talk about, I'm so glad that I got the chance to do this segment because it's the fun part. I mean, all the things that Russell talked about, building posture, building belief, these are all the prerequisites. Uh, Trista, putting you guys in a position to have the proper, getting to the action plan because you have to have goals. If you don't have goals, then what's the point of an action plan, right? To achieve those goals. Does that make sense? So now we're actually going to get into the process of not only being in a position to talk to your leads, but ultimately get to the point where you're setting up the appointments, the demonstrations, and of course, letting our fabulous team do what they do best. So we're going to cover lead generation. We're going to cover positioning yourself properly, the simple sales approach, because that's what really the 101 WCT is all about, ladies and gentlemen. It is about that third party good referral approach. You know, you don't have to be the expert. Trust me, I'm far from it. I am not a technical guy. I do not have that background. I'm a people guy, I'm a relationship guy. And if you believe you're the same, you will make a lot of money with this division. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So and then we're going to do a, a retailing workshop. You heard this earlier. But what are we selling? What are we selling? There we go. I just want to make sure you're still awake. Come on, guys, stay with us. Stay with us. We've had long days too, but it's worth it. It's all worth it. We are not selling technology, features, or benefits. Absolutely, we are selling the appointment. Our fabulous team of product specialists at MA Web Centers, they are the experts for a reason. I get asked all the time um, because I have done very well over the last couple of years at MA Web Centers. Ray, you must do your own demonstrations. Absolutely not. Not at all. I just connect. I do what I'm supposed to do. And as um, Russell said, let Brian and his team do their job. But this is the simple sales approach. Is It's for everybody and anybody. But it's certainly for the new web center owner. It's for those that are minoring in this amazing division. Uh, people that will continue to use our product specialists all the time, as I do. You'll leverage the system. You don't specialize, and we're going to cover that actually leading into role playing, which Trista is going to cover. And that's you actually want to. You should be writing. Uh, we need the pointer here. You should write that down. I do not specialize because you're going to use it, and it's going to be invaluable verbiage when you're uh, doing role playing, okay? Or when you're in that position to talk to a potential prospect. So we're going to talk about uh, names list and the jogger to get those names on that list. As I said, the referral approach, and this fits absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, into your daily routine. You See, most of you, because you haven't uh, plugged into web centers, and, and I was the same way, because I hadn't gone to trainings and so forth early on, but what we do in terms of what we're teaching here today is exactly, exactly, exactly what you do to prospect in the business for Market America. Okay, it's the same exact prospect. It's the art of asking questions. It's the art of getting to know somebody, building rapport, and when it feels good, you're gonna set the appointment to show the plan. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. It's the same exact thing here. Same exact thing here. And of course, we need our inventory. And our inventory is people, it's prospects, it's our names list, okay? And possibilities are everywhere. So you've heard that a million times. If you've been in this business for a while, you've heard that. You've heard other trainers. If you've been to a local seminar, you've heard it over this past weekend. Possibilities are everywhere. But it should be fun. This business should be fun. If it's not, you're doing something wrong. I don't know how, how else to say it. You're doing something wrong if this business is not fun. Yes, you're going to have some frustrations and some stress because we're not always going to close the deal. We're not always going to close the prospect. We're not always going to get that appointment to show the plan. We get that. But it's the fun, it's the fun part of it is going through the process because you know you're getting better each time and you're getting closer and closer to a yes. Okay? And it is easier. It's much easier when you're dealing with warm markets. You become more successful. You will get a head start faster and certainly more duplicatable starting with your warm markets. Okay? This is what, and by the way, all this is available. Okay, not only is it in your getting started, guys, I know not everybody has 
a getting started guide, but as Trista said, mawc411.com, you should be circling that, you should be saving it on your phone. That, as, as, as again, Sarah has done an amazing job updating that. You guys have no idea, if you haven't been there yet, the, the, the tool that you have your hands on. But it always starts with a names list. Think about industries. Guys, what I love about our program, about this division at MA Web Centers, is that we don't have to service a certain niche or a, you know, a certain, uh, only, you know, maybe a few industries. Our platform is geared for every company. Okay, now we're not gonna go after you know, the Microsofts of the world and so forth. Trust me, you're gonna have a lot more fun and sell a lot more sites and make a lot more money okay, targeting those small, medium-sized businesses that you heard Russell talk about earlier. Okay, it's a phenomenal demographic, but we're not relegated to industries, all right? It's just finding a need that the clients or prospective clients have or a problem that, they're, that we need to solve with our platform, okay? So look at the industries, and you're really gonna focus, and I'm going for that pointer. You're gonna focus on the first three columns, okay? Think about it, I want you to write this down. This will actually save time for our uh, retailing workshop. Who owns a business? Who do you know works for a business? Wow, isn't that a crazy elementary question? <laughs> yeah, you're laughing, but you, when you start thinking about that, you think about people you know, and if they have a job, they work for some sort of company, if they don't work for themselves, right? Who do you do business with? Who are you patronizing? Where have you been going to get your car fixed and oil changes for the last 10 years? Your dry cleaner, restaurants, who are you giving your money to? These people should be doing business with you. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, not all of them will, but if you position yourself properly for the conversation, which of course this is going to take you through, you're going to see how that works. But with the simple sales approach, this is why we're highlighting these first three columns here in terms of who owns, who works for, and who do you do business with. Okay, but these should be great joggers right here. I guarantee you before you walk in this room today, you, you just saw this just now in the last 60 seconds, and all of a sudden you have a few possibilities <coughs> pop into your mind you just wrote down because you saw these industries. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, this is no, this a part of this is in your bank starter guide, but this is also available on MAWC411.com. Okay? All the tools you guys need. Guys, if you don't have something in the Getting Started Guide, it's on MAWC411.com. Okay? It always is important to obviously know a little, bit, a little bit about your prospects in any given situation or current situation. Okay? You're going to be more inclined to reach out with them, engage with them, start a conversation, and of course, it will help you be prepared with good questions. Now, you know, you please, please do not get hung up on spending a ton of time researching every single company that you write down on your list. Do a quick search on Google or Bing. Like Russell said, first things for the first thing you see, if you physically type them in by name and they do not come up, and if they have a website, that's like the biggest red flag of all. If they're not coming up on Google and you, you didn't do a keyword search, you type them in by name and they're not coming up, that's bad. That's like, that's terrible, okay? But then if they do come up, Remember when Russell was taking you through some of the examples of our design center, um, uh, design center examples, and when he showed you the first Shamahorn seafood, and then he showed you the before and then the after, you all went, ah. If you don't get that when you're researching your prospects, chances are the website needs a facelift. Does everybody agree with that? If it doesn't give you the wow factor, not being web people, and again, I'm not an IT or technical person, I look through it through the eyes of a consumer. If it doesn't draw me in, if it doesn't want to make me click, but like Russell said, make me want to have that lobster, I'm gone. I'm not going to click on another page, okay? So if it's not drawing you in as a consumer, then chances are, bam, put a little star next to that one. All right, guys, this is just easy things. We're all consumers. We're part of the best consumer company on the planet in terms of providing solutions, right? It's no different here. We'll all look at our shop.com portals. Look at all the updates we're doing. So it's drawing and keeping our customers there. And when you look somebody up, you literally should maybe take a minute or two tops and just browse through their site. What's the navigation like? Is it hard or is it easy? 
Can you get to the contact information very quickly? Okay, and then the better you get, you'll find out, you, you know, you'll be able to realize, well, is it mobile friendly and responsive and so forth. So these are all things that you can find out very, very quickly. Please do not spend hours or, oh, God forbid, days. I know a lot of people have done it. You know, they take a whole week and they're researching all these companies. Don't. You're losing money. You're losing money and time is money. Okay, I already talked about this in terms of defining your names list. <laughs> Think about places that you patronize, you're spending money with them, they should be spending money with you. Okay? And do they have a site? Is it any good? Has it been updated? Are they using social media? Now, we've hammered that this past week. We've been hammering it for years because it's so huge. Now again, I keep referring back to our previous speakers because they covered some of this, but you know, Russell talked about you know, the Facebook page when he was giving you those examples. Listen, that's all well and great if you've got a thousand likes. What's it doing for you? What's it doing for you? They can't go there, they can't buy, they can't make a reservation, they can't look at your calendar, okay? Facebook is not the answer to increase your sales like a website can, like our platform can, all right? So you wanna understand your approach, and we're gonna talk about how to get some of the conversations started. Again, we're still talking in warm markets, everybody understand that. We're not talking about coal for right now, okay? So we're talking about your warm market, and it always starts with hello and hi. Right? Two words that'll make you the most money in market America. <laughs> Say it with a smile on your face. Hi, how are you doing today? How's things going? Again, somebody you know, you could be at the soccer game with your kids, you're at the restaurant that you're patronizing, you know, whatever the case may be. How's life treating you? What's new? What's going on? All right? Typically. You know, it's sooner or later that will lead into a business question. How's business treating you? How's the last few years been with the economy? Has it, has it hit you guys at all? Which you already know the answer to that, right? Chances are it has. Very, very few um, companies that are in our target demographic in terms of prospects haven't been hit hard by the recession. Most of them have. The majority of them have. So you, again, it's rhetorical, but you got to ask because you want to hear what's, what's what's not important is their answer back to you it's their body language and their tonality of how they give you that answer because they might just you know some proud business owners may say oh yeah no it's good it's good and you know deep down they're like man it sucks you now can always be better business can always be better even if you're thriving it should always be looking to improve okay and your response to that, and when they say, yeah, we, we, we've been hit pretty hard you know, the last few years, it certainly can be better. I get that a lot these days. Let me ask you a question. Has your website picked up any of the slack? Now, most business owners are going to look at you cross-eyed, okay, and say, because they don't know what that means. Even if they have a website, they still don't know what that means, a lot of them. All right? How's your website doing? They may say, well, what do you mean? Well, are you, you know, are you picking up some, some internet leads and some internet sets? Internet possibilities. Simple questions, guys. Because it always is about conversational marketing. Just like the business. If you guys get an opportunity to listen to an old audio by Frank Kiefer called Overcoming Objections. Anybody ever listen to that audio? Yeah. There you go. There you go. We got some veterans in the room. He always talks about, you know, we don't we're not in a convincing business. We're in the communicating and conveying business. It's based on conversational marketing, conversational referrals. So remember, the person that is asking the questions is controlling the conversation. And you are dictating the topic of conversation. Okay? Now you don't need to, again, we're talking about the simple sales approach. So you, know, you don't need to ask so many questions because you're building a thesis here. All right? You just want to ask enough questions so you can get a good feel for when the timing is right to ultimately set that appointment or at least have the opportunity to set the appointment for the demonstration. So, and if we're, we get ultimately to the question of about their business and website, then obviously that's what we're going to be talking about, right? And that's what the, the conversation, that's probably gonna be the bulk of the conversation, especially if somebody is frustrated, if sales are down, if they're, you know, they're really struggling, or even if they're kind of just stagnant, you know, yeah, they're consistent, but nowhere near where they think they should be or their projections were heading into the year, okay? So just keep that in mind. Hello, hi, how are you, how are things going? You know, how's business? 
you think about that. I don't know what kind of uh, scenarios it's going to play out during role playing with Trista, but you know, when you're in a restaurant, when you are again, if you're a mechanic, I was a service provider. They're phenomenal leads for us because it's you know they get repeat business. But when you ask them, you know, how's business going? Look them right in the eye and just pay attention to that body language in terms of their their response. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. All right, good. So. I probably have just, so I always have a tendency to kind of be ahead of myself here. But based on the responses that they give you, okay, you should be, your response is going to be, when they say they don't have a website, okay, you're thinking to yourself, not saying out loud, <coughs> great, you can help them, okay? They say, Mom, the website's doing terrible. Don't burst out and say, great, okay? <laughs> you give it a little internal fist pump, right? <laughs> Even better, you can help them. I'm working on it. That's they like. I think Russell covered that about the, the one demonstration uh, example of you know coming soon and God knows whatever's going on. Um, you ask them, great. How long have you been working on it, and who is working on it? If you don't mind me asking, because a lot of times it's well, my niece, my nephew, you know, side project while they're in college. Okay, and if they say my website's doing great, fantastic. That's a scenario, guys, where maybe you ask one or two questions. And the most important question following that should be, great, what do you like about it? What's it really doing for you? See if they really know, because they could be full of it. Because <laughs> they want to shut the conversation down. Does that make sense? So I said, well, what do you like about it? What, why is it doing so well? What's doing so well? And if they start rattling off a few things, God bless them. That means they're on top of it. That is an engaged business owner in their marketing. Not only in their website, but probably in a lot of other areas as well. Okay? So, but we're in a worst case scenario, you just keep following up because things change. Can we all agree? Okay? Maybe their, their provider that is doing well right now, all of a sudden, like Russell said, all of a sudden the basement floods, servers go down. You know, anything could happen. Okay? And if you just be a good client and prospect manager, and be great at follow-up, which of course where most people kind of, you know, we fall short, and that's why it's part of the basic five. You know, the, the fortune is in the follow-up. So even if they are doing great, and you think they've got a very, very good looking website, and by the way, don't let that deter you, okay? If you research them and they, they have a good looking website, because great, they could have an aesthetically, wonderfully looking, pleasing website, and that's where it could end. There could be no tools, it cannot be optimized, you know, there's no email marketing. There's a lot of the, just not a stuff there to help them grow their business. It's great when people actually go there because they have to know the name of it and it looks good on the, online, but then that's where it could end. Does that make sense? Okay? Great. One person agrees. Outstanding. <laughs> just kidding, guys. Gotta have fun. Gotta have fun. So, we already covered this. I'm way ahead of myself on the slides here. As I said, I have a tendency to do that because... I've done this a couple of times over the past year. Um, they do, they're doing great. you got to ask them what they like about it. And, what, and then you can follow that question up by saying, is there something that it's not currently doing that you wish it was? Great question. If there's anything you could change, what would it be? But it's not as, as it's, we, we talk about this all the time in the business. It's not so important. These are phenomenal questions. But now it's about your body language. It's about your tonality. It's about your confidence and posture. Not, well, if there was something that you could change, would you? <laughs> like Russell said, they're smelling that lack of confidence a mile away, and you are, you just blow yourself out of the water. Okay? I'm not saying you have to be overzealous and be like some, you know, raging lunatic that walks across Niagara Falls with a real barrel of bricks in and stuff like that. But you could say, hey, if there's anything you could change, what would it be? Okay, is there anything that it's not doing? All right, simple questions, guys. That's why it's the simple sales approach. Okay, these are, you know, I know it sounds like, uh, to some of you, this might be sound so elementary, but it works. It's why we have it, because it works. Okay? If you guys, how many of you were at the breakout on Thursday? Wow, nobody? <laughs> okay. So, you know, you, you, you saw Sugalot up there, and Sarah mentioned this. I mean, Sugalot is a master 
at this simple area, you go, somebody on her team, simple sales approach, okay? Because she is not the expert, but she is a phenomenal connector at identifying a need or a problem, knowing that we have a solution, and her thing is, hey, let me hook you up with my peeps. They're awesome. I mean, it's really what she does, okay? But you gotta be confident. You have to be confident. I don't have one. Have you ever thought about having one? What's kept you or what stopped you from getting one? Not oh, too expensive. Don't need it. Got a thousand likes on Facebook. <laughs> Quick story. I, I got referred to a guy that retail, he's a, he retails products, motorcycle uh, accessory company. 25,000 products. We went in the demo, the guy was so hung up on <laughs> on spending money. So I just, I, I just, yeah, I can't help myself just as a, as a businessman, as a sales consultant. I said, well, let me ask you a question. And you're telling me that you have to last through the summertime because it's your busy time of the year. I said, what is your plan to grow your business so ultimately you can have a website? You're telling me you ship, you can ship all over the country, even internationally, but you're not giving your customers the availability to buy your products online. So what's your game plan to grow your business? He looked me dead in the eye, straight face, and said, Facebook. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, yeah, this point is over. No, I didn't. But no, I mean, and that's somebody you still follow up with. You still follow up with. But listen, some people just, you know, they have these preconceived notions. And it's not always about price. It really isn't. It's not always about price. It's about the process and how much time that they actually have to spend. And when they really see what we have to offer, and that's why the demo covers all that, I mean, it's, man, it's such a no-brainer when you get them on the demonstration. So, but these are powerful questions when it comes to, no, I don't have one. You know, you can say, why not? You know, what's kept you from getting one? Okay, but just be prepared for the, you know, for their responses. All right, and I'm sure Tristan will cover some of this in role-playing, you know, because it's, we're not, we're not here to give you fake uh, scenarios guys okay we're here to give you real scenarios and we know a lot a majority of the time people are going to hammer you with price we understand that okay so just be prepared I'm working on it great who's doing your site how long have they been working on it where are you at in the process now depending upon what they say and if it's anything other than almost done we're getting ready to launch I'm very excited I'm stoked have you considered other options since it's been taking so long? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, but what comes next? More questions. More questions. I said this earlier, starting this, this out. People ask me all the time when they see this, they'll say, well, 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 Ray, how do you know when it feels right? How do you know when it feels right? And I, and I tell you, just, just trust your instincts, trust your gut. But if you've asked good quality questions and you are satisfied with the amount of information that you got from them and you have a good handle on their potential needs or the problems and issues that they're dealing with, then you got it. You got to go for the appointment. You got to go for the appointment. Because if they keep asking you questions, guys, that, those, those, are, those are buying signals. Those are buying signs. Okay? And honestly, if somebody asks you about price, that's a good question. That's a buying sign. Okay? They're not just you know, asking you that because they want to shut you down or because as soon as they hear the number, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna run away. Not at all. Not at all. Okay? Remember, everybody operates their business differently. But this is a good way to now put yourself in a position to close the appointment, to, to lock it down, to go in for it, right? Is to sort of paraphrase, if you will back to them. So listen, like what you're telling me is if you had a way you could connect with your customers a little bit better through email marketing campaigns, and if you could have better traffic being found organically on the search engines, this is something that would be of huge interest to you. And of course, what business owner is going to say, no, nah, don't need none of that. <laughs> they say, well, listen, and then, well, I know I'm ahead of myself again on the verbiage here, so I better just click. But this is where now you're going to get into the verbiage of closing the demo. Huge verbiage right here. Write this one down. You know it's not an area I specialize in. But 
Write that down. You know it's not an area you know, it's not an area I specialize in, but I work with a phenomenal company that has an entire division dedicating to helping companies just like yours. I would love to make an introduction on your behalf because I think it could be a good fit for you. What works best? Evenings or mornings? Tuesdays or Thursdays? You know, got to like, you know, always ask that day and time. Okay? It's the assumptive. It's the assumptive. You're going for it now. All right? Or you can say, I'd be happy to set an appointment with one of my product specialists. It'll take about 30 to 40 minutes to show you the features and benefits of how our platform works. What works best for you? Mornings or afternoons? Is that hard verbiage, by the way? I mean, do you think you would get you'd stumble or get stuck on that? No. Thank you. One confident. I love that. <laughs> listen, you could say, hey, listen, hey, especially with somebody you know, it's a close friend or family. Listen, it's not my thing, but you know I'm partnered with this awesome company that has a division that does nothing but help companies just like yours. They have, and, and get specific if you have to. They have they do nothing but help. Yeah, you know, they've helped tons of mechanic and auto repair places just like yours. They have enough of them to help tons of chiropractic practices just like yours. Because we have. We have. Okay? But it's confidence. It's confidence. And you need to walk away from that knowing that you feel good. That you're not only making a phenomenal referral to help them, they're going to feel so, they're going to have so much gratitude to say, wow, you know, that he was thinking of me because he or she wants to help me. Okay, but this does, by saying that you don't specialize in it, oh my goodness, it takes so much of the burden off you. You know, you don't have to worry about asking questions. I know I'm ahead of myself in the slides. You know, it's not an area I specialize in, but I work with a phenomenal company that has an entire division dedicated to helping companies just like yours. Guys, put your own twist on it. You don't have to do it. If you're writing this down verbatim and you're trying to memorize it verbatim, you know what's going to happen when you go to, to say it? You're going to sound like a robot. Okay? You're going to sound weird. People are laughing because guess what? They've done it. <laughs> All right? Either one works. If it's somebody that knows you, you can say, listen, you probably didn't know this about me. Did you ever, does that verbiage sound familiar? Just like when you're setting an appointment to show the plane, you probably didn't know I started a business. You probably didn't know this about me. But I'm part of a great company that has an entire division dedicated to helping companies just like yours. Okay? All right, moving on. So you are making a simple, strong referral. You're putting huge weight in the referral by saying you work with a great company. You're offering a solution to the problem. Remember, if you can paraphrase back to so, Mike, what you're telling me is, okay? And then you don't have to worry about asking questions. And you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to steal any of Tristan's thunder, but she's going to talk about that in role playing. But they may ask you a question or two, but I've done this, guys. I still do this. And I'm, believe me, I can't answer a lot of the questions. I can't answer every one of them like Russell can, because he's the man. But I always, I always defer back to my guys. Always. Even if I know the answer. Uh, so you know what? That's a phenomenal question, Mike. I'll tell you what. Make sure you write that one down, and I will as well, and I'll make sure they cover that during the demonstration. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. If you already told them you're not the expert. You know, you are just being kind enough. You're being nice enough to introduce them to your peeps that are rock stars at what they do. Okay? Set the appointment. Set the appointment. Feels good, do it, baby. Do it. All right? And yes, you need to confirm appointments. Our team does a phenomenal job uh, with email. Even you have the opportunity to even make your uh, prospects can even get a text message if, if you so choose. Uh, probably a lot of trainers will give you maybe different opinions about this in terms of your follow-up. Me, because I am an old school sales guy, I'm picking up the phone. I'm not sending an email, I'm not sending a text because people can hide behind email and text. Everybody agree with that? You ever happened ever happen in the business when you went to show the plan and they, they bailed on you? Right? I want to pick up the phone. I love this. I learned this from Sarah way back when, um, when, when she was talking about confirming appointments. And it's so simple. You're calling because not only are you confirming the appointment, the reason why you want, you know, you're, you're calling is because you're going to confirm that you have the proper contact info and so forth. So 
Hey Sue, so it's Ray. I just wanted to give you a quick shout and, and, and let you know that our guys over at MA Web Centers are really excited to meet you tomorrow online. I just wanted to give you a quick call and make sure we had the right contact number for you and your partner and also that you're going to be able to be online without interruption for 35 to 40 minutes. Okay, and yes, you can also uh, confirm that they hopefully <laughs> have an up-to-date computer PC with a browser and they're not on Windows XP. <laughs> Although we can do the demo on XP because I done one not too long ago, a couple months ago on Windows XP. Two million dollar a year company running Windows XP and they wonder why their sales suck. <laughs> Guys, it's 2015, really? Really? And I, I think that to myself, it's one thing to be operating in, a, in with, you know, your PCs and your, and your and whatever you're using for technology, but as a business to not have a website? Are you kidding me? Ah. Anyway, so does that verbiage make sense for as far as confirming the appointment? Yes. It's very easy. Don't get nervous. The phone should not be heavy because you think they're going to cancel on you if you call them. Okay? Because guess what? If they're really going to cancel, they're going to cancel anyway. So at least you are doing the right thing as a good client manager or a potential client manager to make sure that they're in good shape for the demo. Because guys, look, we've been, we've all been there. Not only as trainers, on any experienced web center owners in the room, where even if you went there, I, I actually go on, on, on all of my demos when I can. But you show up, and early on, you didn't take the time to just prep them as far as the little things that they need. You know, computer, phone, you know, maybe a good speaker, and it's like. You know, next thing you know, you're wasting time because they're trying to grab another laptop or their internet was down or whatever. Okay, so it's just a little things to just get out of the way to make sure you're giving our guys over at ME Web Centers, Brian and his team, the best opportunity to conduct a good demo. Does that make sense? Okay. So, checklists, obviously, time and date for the appointment, most important. Uh, just as important, attendance by all decision makers. I'm telling you right now, if you, I better not find out my training that you were willing to set demo up with a secretary. And she's the only one that was going to be on the demo because she does all their current updates and, and, and changes and everything for their current website. So no, I'll be the one you'll be dealing with. That's great and all, but unless she has the, uh, the empowerment to make a financial decision, uh-uh, need the owner. Need the owner, okay? And it's very easy to get them on there. And guess what? I ask that question. And I ask it in such a nice way that it reminds them that I'm not here to waste my time nor yours. Because guess what? We're only going to do this demo once, okay? We're not going to do it once for her and once for the owner. Not happening, all right? Guys, you have to take your business seriously. Or why would they take you seriously? Does that make sense? Okay, so you have to say, listen, so it's wanted to confirm that, John, you and your partner is going to be there, okay? And, and you're going to put that information into your system when you're setting the appointment. Uh, make sure that, again, they have good, decent, you know, PC, whatever, um, laptop, internet's good to go, browser's good to go. I mean, look, you don't have to ask them about their browser. Say, hey, listen, you've got a good computer in your office, you get online, no problem. You know, have you ever done a screen share? Most of them may say no, some may say yes. And even if they haven't, it, it's just a quick download for what the guys over at the team at MA Web Centers use. It takes two seconds, boom, they're ready to go anyway. It's just a quick download just to make sure we're compatible. All right? So, and again, if you haven't done so already in your first conversation, make sure that you encourage them to write down the questions that the product specialist will answer. Because they are the expert. Okay. So, this is, you guys, you have to, one of the, the best things that you can do when not only building rapport, but putting yourself in a position to make that prospect feel good about taking your advice on the referral, so to speak, is by letting them know how phenomenal our team is. Again, you don't have to get you know, overzealous and crazy, but when you're talking about we, okay, are in the simple sales approach, they, right, phenomenal team of product specialists. They are not salespeople, they are product specialists. They conduct the demonstrations, 
They close the deal for you. How many people in here hate to sell? Come on, be honest. Great, you're going to make a lot of money here. How many people love to sell? Great, you're going to make a lot of money here. <laughs> we have our special teams that implements the new digital products and so forth that are purchased in addition to customer care, otherwise known as our phenomenal 24-7 tech support team that are incredible. They will handle all the guys. That, to me, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I mean, our clients pay 60 bucks a month, okay? Russell didn't give the number, but our base package is 60 bucks a month. They should be paying 600 for what we have. And I sincerely mean that. I mean, that 24-7 tech support where they will literally, I've been there with Russell. I have been with certain clients, family, where you are on the phone for hours to get stuff done for them. And he said, these poor people don't even get to go to the bathroom because they finish what they're doing with you. I'm telling you, you have to understand what you have your hands on here with these guys. And that's why we're doing this from a third party because they are the experts. Even if you are a web design by trade, it's your profession, okay? This is, and this is new to you. Let them do their job. They know our platform. They know it better than anybody. They know it better than you. And if you're, you're young, you've been in the business for a long time. They're incredible at what they do. <sighs> you think I like tech support? Yeah. <laughs> All right, and of course, you earn retail profit and ongoing DV for each client that you have, whether you, that stays with us not only as a client, but of course with our, our new products as well. But you just got to plug in, guys. Don't be weird. Ask the right questions, identify a need, boom, go for the appointment and get the demonstration. And let these guys do their job and they will do it well and they will make you money. Is that okay with everybody? Is that okay with everybody? Okay. So right in the beginning you probably did this. And again, for the sake of time, because I know not everybody has a uh, getting started guide, which by the way, you need to get it guys and you should buy it today. But as um, Russell said, Trista said, you can get them. They are available online. They are on mawc411.com. But just kind of re, kind of bringing it back all together, the, the checklist for simple sales starts with the names list, understanding your approach. You have to show a sincere and genuine care about your prospects. Ask and listen. Do not do this. If you're doing this, too much of this, you're, you're not, you're not going to get the appointment, okay? Because we all do too much of this, and then we don't show plans because we're puking all over everybody, okay? Take it one step at a time. It's the same thing here. You're going to make a strong referral, edify our team. They are the best at what they do. I'm so proud to be working with this amazing division. Confirm the appointments, and, of course, leverage the system. So, but in terms of the names list generation, we talked about it already. I just wanted to see where I'm at here. Okay. Pick an industry. Pick an industry. If you come from a certain industry, uh, and again, I said it earlier, if you come from a restaurant or you've been in any type of service business, use your background because you know your industry well. You can speak the language. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're talking to them, I mean, you're going to be able to have such an amazing, really good realistic, non-weird conversation because you have worked in that industry. So put yourself in their shoes. You need to put yourself in the business owner's shoes to say, hey, if I was growing this business, what would I want for my online presence? You with me? Okay. So, and then of course, you're going to go by column by column. I know you can't see this, but again, you guys have access to it. But, and then you do your research. And we're not going to spend a ton of time researching, right? Just a minute or two on each one, and you're good to go.